Lenz's law states that a changing magnetic flux through a closed conducting loop induces a current. The induced current has a direction such that the magnetic field that it generates opposes the change in the magnetic flux. Let's look at Lenz's law by doing an example. For each of the following, indicate the direction of the induced magnetic field and the induced current by drawing directly on the picture. We have a conducting loop and we have a magnet that is moving towards the conducting loop. Looking at the orientation of this magnet with the north pole on the left and the south pole on the right, and the fact that this magnet is moving to the left, trying to pass through the loop, this would cause an increase in the magnetic flux through the loop. It's an increase in the magnetic flux because the number of magnetic field lines passing through the loop will be increasing as the, as the magnet moves to the left. Because the magnetic flux is increasing, there is going to be an induced current that will produce an induced magnetic field in such a way to oppose the change of magnetic flux. And what would oppose the change of magnetic flux is if there were a repulsive force acting on this magnet to keep it from entering the loop. Because the only way to keep the magnetic flux from increasing is to try and prevent the magnet from entering the loop. And to do that, a magnetic force must be exerted on that magnet. So the task here really is to figure out the direction of the magnetic field that is induced, given the fact that we know that this magnet must be experiencing a repulsive force to try to prevent it from entering the loop. So remember, when two magnetic fields are parallel, and here I'll label these magnetic fields as B and B induced, if they are parallel, these two magnetic fields would be attractive. And when two magnetic fields are anti-parallel, or in other words, opposite in direction, these two magnetic fields will exert repulsive forces on each other. So for this problem, there must be a Magnet, an induced magnetic field that is opposite the direction of the magnetic field of the magnet in order for there to be a repulsive force to try to prevent the magnet from entering the loop. So with that said, the induced magnetic field should be to the right. And now that we've proposed that the induced magnetic field is to the right, we can use the right-hand rule to determine the direction of the induced current. So in using the right-hand rule, we'll use the version in which we put our thumb in the direction of the magnetic field. So here is my thumb. And we'll take the fingers of our right hand and then curl them. And the direction that our fingers curl indicate the direction of the magnetic field, or rather the current that's induced. And in this situation, our fingers curl, if we were to look at the induced magnetic field from the right, our fingers curl in the counterclockwise direction. So that means the induced current must be circulating counterclockwise, approaching us from the top of the loop, moving away from us at the bottom of the loop, 
And so the induced current is counterclockwise from the perspective of looking at it from the right, and the induced magnetic field is to the right. Well, now let's look at this scenario. The orientation of the magnet is the same, but notice what's happening here. The magnetic flux is decreasing because the magnet is moving to the right. The magnet is moving away from the conducting loop, causing a decrease in the magnetic flux. Now, to prevent the magnetic flux from decreasing, there must be an induced current that generates an induced magnetic field, which will then create a uh, force, a magnetic force, between the magnetic field of the magnet and the induced magnetic field to try to prevent the magnet from moving further away. Because the further away the magnet moves, the magnetic flux will continue to decrease. So with this, we can surmise that there must be a magnetic force that will attract the magnet to the conducting loop in order to keep the magnet from continuing to move farther away, which causes the magnetic flux to decrease. So let's use the fact that we know that there must be an attractive force between the magnet and the conducting loop. Now with what we know from magnetic fields, for there to be an attracting force, two magnetic fields must be parallel to each other. So in this situation, we have the magnetic field of the magnet, which I'll label as B, and so there must be an induced magnetic field that is parallel to the magnetic field of the magnet in order for those magnetic fields to exert attractive forces on each other. So we could say that the direction of the induced magnetic field is to the left because that would be parallel to the magnetic field of the magnet. Well, now that we know the induced magnetic field is to the left, we could use the right-hand rule to determine the direction of the current. So here we will put our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, or rather the thumb of our right hand will put in the direction of the magnetic field. We'll then curl our fingers and when we curl our fingers, that indicates the direction of the induced current. And here, if we were to look at this from the left, we would see that the current would circulate around like this. Well, maybe drawing it directly on the loop will be more clear. So we'll have the current circulating around in this direction, where as it's going around at the top of the loop, the current is going away from us. The bottom of the loop, the current is coming towards us. And that would be the direction of the induced current that prevents or tries to prevent the change of the magnetic flux. That induced current creates a magnetic field that is, that is attractive to the magnet because that is the way that Lenz's law says that the induced current will try to oppose the change in the magnetic flux. So let's look at this scenario. The magnet has switched its orientation. So the south pole is entering the loop, or it will pass through the loop before the north pole. To oppose the magnetic field of the magnet. Because in opposing the magnetic field of the magnet, those two magnetic fields being anti-parallel would exert repulsive forces on each other. The repulsive forces that they generate on each other will try to prevent the magnet from entering the loop. 
Well, now that we know the direction of the induced magnetic field, let's use the right hand rule to figure out the direction of the induced current. So again, thumb of our right hand in the direction of the magnetic field, fingers of our right hand curl around. The direction our fingers curl is the direction of the induced current. So here our, our fingers are curling in such a way in which the induced current must circulate around like that. How that looks in our conducting loop is there is an induced current circulating around in that direction because that's the direction of the fingers of our right hand. And again, that induced current produces an induced magnetic field, and that induced magnetic field opposes the magnetic field of the magnet as the magnetic flux is increasing. So here we have the orientation of the magnet where the south pole is on the left, the north pole of the magnet is on the right, and notice that the magnet is moving away from the conducting loop. Since the magnet is moving away from the conducting loop, the magnetic flux is decreasing. The magnetic field of the magnet is directed to the right. The magnet is moving away from the conducting loop. Because the magnet is moving away from the conducting loop, it is causing a decrease in the magnetic flux. Lenz's law states that an induced magnetic field will be created to try to oppose that decrease. Now, in opposing that decrease, that induced magnetic field interacting with the magnetic field of the magnet will produce an attractive force. This force will try to keep the magnet from moving farther away because basically it doesn't want the change of magnetic flux. So the two magnetic fields must be attractive. Knowing that the two magnetic fields must be attractive means that the induced magnetic field must be parallel to the magnetic field of the magnet. Since it must be parallel, they will exert attractive forces on each other. Now that we know that the induced magnetic field is parallel to the magnetic field of the, of the magnet, we could use the right hand rule yet again to figure out the direction of the induced current. We will put our thumb in the direction of the magnetic field. We will curl the fingers of our right hand and the direction that our fingers curl is the direction of the induced current. So here, our fingers are curling. This is our right hand, and here is our thumb. So in this situation, our fingers are curling towards us, which means that the induced current is circulating around the induced magnetic field like that. What this means for our conducting loop is the induced current is coming around, coming towards us at the top, moving away from us at the bottom. And again, the induced magnetic field is to the right, parallel to the magnetic field of the magnet.